Today we're going to build a 12 volt lithium ion battery. It's going to be a weldless battery using this module here and we're going to use six 18650 cells that are 3 amp hours a piece. This module makes it really easy because uh, it doesn't require a spot welder or any other specialty tools, just a soldering iron for the BMS and just about everybody has one of those. These screws apply contact pressure to the cell, and there is a channel, see, to put copper strip in. That should be good. There we go. I'm just going to temporarily hold this in here just for a moment. But I'm going to do it like this. There we go. That makes more sense. Okay, so now all the cells are connected in parallel. The next step is to connect them in series. There are several ways to connect them in series. See, there's a slit that goes all the way down there. I could put nickel or copper strip in there. But in this case, because we're just building this small low current 12 volt battery, I'm just going to solder these together. We need room for the BMS. That should do it. Not quite. There we go.
we're going to charge it. There we go. Okay, now I'm measuring millivolts. We're under a 7 amp load. Let's see how these series connections are doing. 3.9 millivolts of drop. 3.1. That's plenty good enough. Charging, charging, charging. Still charging at 7 amps. And here, here's the connections. It's just screwed down with that copper strip. Current happily flowing, no problem. The cells are as warm as you'd expect them to be. They're MH1s, uh, very healthy MH1s, and they're at 3.5 amps load each. Barely, barely noticeable, but definitely noticeable. The MOSFETs are like twice as warm. It's reached the constant voltage phase, so current is starting to fall as expected. Okay, it's not fully charged, but it's charged enough to do a discharge test. Now, instead of having this on the output of the regulator, I've got it on the input of the regulator. So it is the thing supplying the power now. And now I've got this other weldless module. This is a 8P 18650 weldless module, and I've only got four cells in there right now. Okay, I've got the regulator set to 10 amps, and I'm going to turn it on. And there we go. So this is a weldless 3S 2P charging a weldless 1S 4P at 10 amps. We can see the input voltage. Let's turn this off and turn it on. That's the multimeter turning off over there off camera. It's been running for six minutes so far. The B of S is at 96. The cells are at 92, 93. Connections. Can't really see any appreciable increase. But right here. 91, 90, I saw 94. But the hottest thing is definitely the MOSFETs. Just saw 97. And just for reference, the room is 85, 86. It's been charging for eight minutes. We can also see the temperature of the weldless pack, 89. And then as you expect, because the cells are actually down here, 96. Let's get the connections, or the side at least, 94. And then let's look down in here at the cells, 113. And then we'll get the copper connection over here, 96. Fahrenheit, of course. Okay, this has been running for 10 minutes. After a totally successful full charge cycle, I would say this battery works and works just fine. The great thing about this battery is that when the cells inevitably die, I can just swap them out for any other cells. And here we have it. Here's the empty shell, just ready for cells. Because everything is soldered in on the back, I mean, it's not going to come out. It's totally secure and fine. You don't have to mess with this or redo it in any way. But just make sure you put the cells in right. You know, you can look at the back and see how you did positive and negative and put the cells in accordingly. Thanks for watching.